Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Uh, we're in the new laser den. It's uh, quite the upgrade from the garage. It's about a hundred and something degrees out in the garage. It's only, I don't know, 82 degrees in here right now because I have the air conditioner off, um, which is right back here somewhere. Um, but when I turn that on, uh, it's so nice here. But anyway, enough about me and the new laser den. Um, but today what we're gonna talk about is full wraps on tumblers. Now, today we're going to use um, the Ohm Tech. This is the Ohm Tech four wheel rotary. It's not made by Ohm Tech, it's made by, you know, somewhere in China. You can find this all over the place. It's, uh, I know you can, I think CloudRay uses this. You can find it on eBay, you can find it on Amazon, but it's a, it's a very basic four wheel rotary tumbler. Now, a couple things that we're gonna focus on today. One, I'm going to be doing a full wrap tumbler. Um, you can see here this clamping system is the clamping system that I designed for this rotary. It is available in my Etsy shop. And if you order this clamping system from me, one of my customers, Joseph, was kind enough to offer some awesome uh, wraps. Uh, and I will send you a link and you will get those absolutely free. So thank you, Joseph, for doing that. So again, if you order this clamping system, uh, for this rotary from my Etsy shop, you'll get this set. There's three different files that come in that. Today we're going to do one of them. So we're going to go over all the setup on this. You've seen, I'm not going to get super detailed on steps per rotation. Um, you can look at one of my other videos, but we are going to set up the tumbler and make sure that we've got everything set so that it comes out properly. So let's start burning together. So let's talk a little a bit about tips and tricks. So one of the things that I like to do before I engrave any tumbler is I like to use the bottom as a test um, so that I know that the settings that I'm going to use are going to burn correctly for that tumbler. Now um, this is just a it's basically a stainless steel painted tumbler it's not powder coated so I'm going to use less power on this than I normally would on a powder coat. But um, if you're new to doing tumblers, one of the things you'll find out is every color um, absorbs the laser energy a little bit differently. So you may have one setting that works fine for yellow, but then you try and do blue and you have to raise your power. You're not getting uh, all the way through it. Uh, some companies use more powder coat than others. So it's always a good idea to do a little bit of a test. Um, and I found that the bottom works really well because it's a place that's not you know, as visible. Um, now what I, I'm not going to do it on this one, but I have actually just created a, a little uh, logo and so the company or the, uh, the store that I sell on Etsy is called Blades and Beams. So I have a little logo and I'll just print it down here. It just says Blame, Blades and Beams and it goes around in a circle kind of like this hand wash only is. That's the only reason I'm not doing it on this one. It's because it's already got stuff engraved here on the bottom and I don't want to try and engrave right over that. So I'm just going to engrave a circle. So one of the things, this is a circle center finder. Um, I sell this and there's another piece that goes along with it that makes it useful for doing um, uh, logo placements, etc. But all you got to do, you place it uh, on here so that these two uh, edges are, are tangent to the circle. Draw a line in the, here and then you turn it doesn't really matter how far, it doesn't have to be 90 degrees or anything like that. You draw another line and that's always going to give you the perfect center of your circle. So now I have a good starting point uh, for my laser. So we're going to move that over here to the corner and now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and burn a 20 millimeter circle around so that uh, I know that it's working okay. Okay, so we got everything in place. Last thing we're gonna do is we're gonna check the focus. I use my little magnetic focus gauge here. It's another product that I designed and uh, it is available on my Etsy shop. It's kind of great, it just goes ahead and you can uh, stick it up here to your machine. You can stick it wherever you, you can stick it wherever you want so you don't lose it. I love this thing. But anyway, so we've got that in place. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, do my burn. So 
it, uh, I should have set my origin so I wouldn't have raced back into place there. But uh, I did 20 uh, or 200 millimeters per second at 20 um, 20 percent power. Let's go ahead and focus here. Let's see if we. I think I'm too close to the camera. So go ahead and uh, refocus on that. So there we go. So now you can see this is my second circle. So it's going to uh, be just fine for this particular tumbler. All right, next step is going to be placing our rotary in here. And I, if you've seen my other videos for the four wheel rotary, you know that I created this jig and on, my, on the link to that, uh, or if you look at that video, um, I do believe I have a Google link where you can download this template and the holes are already cut there. And those holes fit the feet of this Ohmtech four wheel rotary. So it makes putting this in very repeatable. Um, you can set some light burn presets so that the uh, laser head will come where you want it to. And one of the beauties of this setup here is that now I know that my rotary is in the same plane as my laser head. Because if you get this skewed on this axis here, you're not going to, your wraps aren't gonna line up. So you wanna make sure that that is good. So highly recommend using the jig. That's gonna let me uh, get great results, very repeatable. Now the next thing that we're going to do is properly position the laser head to where we're going to start the test burn on our tumbler. First thing we're gonna do is make sure that we have uh, everything set right for the circumference of this particular tumbler. And I'm gonna go through how we do that. But before we actually connect the rotary and are able to do that test burn, we wanna make sure the laser head is in the proper place. Now when I set up this jig, um, I have my rotary start position and basically what I did is I moved the laser head to right here on the center of the tumbler, right where I want it to start. Now when I set this up, it was for a different tumbler, but what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna walk over to Lightburn. I've got a save position set here for my rotary start. So I'm gonna move that and you're gonna see it comes, it comes to the center of the, to the, uh, to the rotary, but it's not quite where we would want this particular one uh, to start. Right, so this tumbler has this plastic lip here, so of course we want to avoid that. So I'm just going to jog this over, and when, let's see, first thing we have to do if we want to use that red dot again, we need to make sure that we're properly in focus or that red dot doesn't exactly line up. So again, I know my tumbler or I know my laser focuses at 18 millimeters, so again, using my trusty gauge, 18 millimeters. So now I can use that red dot and I see basically about 83 millimeters uh, on my display over here. All right, now that I've moved the camera, you can see it's basically 83, 82.9, 168.5 is where we want everything to start. So that's going to be our starting center point. The next thing we want to talk about is tapers. So. Like I said, this is a smaller, this is a 25 ounce tumbler. I just got this at the dollar store. I'm out of uh, the regular, you know, the files that you're gonna get are for the Stanley style uh, or the duplicate uh, 40 ounce tumblers. It's made to fit. We're gonna cover how to adjust this. Um, but as you can see, these tumblers are tapered here at the bottom. So that causes an issue and there's a way to, to work around that. And that's what we're gonna talk about. Uh, here. So, with a smaller tumbler like this, uh, or with a tapered tumbler like this, what we have to do is make sure that we've got focus in multiple positions. So we want to be focused at the front, and then we want to be focused at the rear. So we need to uh, work a little bit of a tilt 
uh, for that. So at the front here, you can see that I'm, I'm at my 18 degrees. And then this particular rotary, the, this, my own tech four wheel rotary, you have this knob here that allows you to make adjustments. Ah, one more quick thing before we uh, jump into light burn. Uh, one thing that I just remembered. So this tumbler that we're going to be engraving today has no handle. It has no logo. So you can start anywhere and end anywhere, and it's not going to make any bit of difference. If you are dealing with a handle or a, a tumbler that has a handle, um, it does kind of make a difference where you start. One of the, one of the reasons that I use this uh, placement tool so often is because I like to know that um, where I'm going to start, right? So if I have my handle back here, I can place this and I will be over here because when you take this handle off, there's little tabs underneath this. They're still going to remain there. So you can line everything up based on those tabs. Now, if I want to start, you know, if, I, if you had the Stanley logo right here, um, maybe you want to start your pattern there. You're putting on, a, uh, if it's not a full wrap, uh, maybe you're putting a name and you want to start right at this position. Um, I have this little piece here that uh, comes with this placement tool. It slides right in this slot and that allows you to line up. So now I've got all four corners. I can just mark it on here and I know exactly where to start. Um, whether I want to have something on the opposite side of the handle or facing you know, a right-handed person that's holding onto this tumbler. If you want to have something that is facing them or if you want it you know, to have a witty saying or something uh, on the, this side that's facing you know, where everybody else can see them. Um, makes it really easy to uh, place all of that. So, okay, now we're gonna jump into light burn. All right, I know I keep saying that we're gonna go into light burn, but I just remembered one thing. Now that we have everything set where it needs to be set, it's time to connect our rotary. Um, you don't wanna connect your rotary until you have the laser head in position of where it needs to be, right? Um, because once you do that, you're going to be able to move on the x-axis, but no, you can no longer move on the y-axis. So on my laser right here is where the y-axis motor uh, is connected. So I'm going to remove that plug. This is the plug for my rotary. So now my rotary is connected. And now we can go take a look at getting things set up in Lightburn. All right, so here we are. We finally made it to light burn. And the first thing that we need to do is we need to set up our rotary. So we're going to come down here um, to uh, machine settings. And I'm going to load from file. Now I've already got my uh, four wheel rotary settings. Um, and I'm probably going to have to modify these a little bit. These are set up for a different tubler. But I'm going to go ahead and open this. And once I've opened that, I want to make sure that I write the settings to the controller. And then you can see here it says controller set in settings written successfully. So I can come out of that. And I'm going to come over here and I'm going to click on enable rotary. And then that lets me use this icon right here. And now I need to tell Lightburn that I'm using a roller style rotary. This doesn't change, so 67.65 is the roller diameter, so those four wheels that are on there, and really it's the front wheels that matter. Those front driver wheels are 65.65 uh, uh, millimeters. Um, I've already got my steps per rotation set at 3,005. I don't think I'll have to change that, but I do need to change my um, circumference. Now we'll go over here in a bit on how to uh, determine your circumference. There's a number of ways that you can do that but we'll do it uh, really quick. But I have already measured it and I know this is 308 millimeters. Um, these two fields are locked together. If I, I can put a thousand in here and you can see as I do that it is going to calculate what the diameter would be. So if you remember all the way back to geometry class, a circle, the diameter 
If you take diameter multiplied by pi, you'll get the circumference. If you take the circumference and divide it by pi, you'll get the object di diameter. And half of the diameter is the radius. But that's neither here nor there. So again, this particular tumbler that I'm going to be burning today has a diameter of 308. It automatically fill, um, excuse me, it has a circumference of 308 millimeters. It will automatically uh, put in the diameter. And I'm going to hit OK. And then I'm going to show you um, how we test and make sure that this is all good. So next thing I need to do is go grab the tumbler. We're going to grab some uh, craft tools and stuff, and we're going to get things all set up there. All right, now, next step, we're going to figure out the diameter, or excuse me, the circumference of our tumbler. The easiest way to do this is to get a, uh, this is just, you know, you can get these at fabric stores. It's just a cloth tape measure. If we wrap this around here, I'm going to see that it is 308 millimeters. Now, so if you don't have one of these, um, I'll tell you how I did it uh, in the first place. So the way that I did this originally, this tumbler had this piece of paper that was wrapped around it. You know, it's got the barcode and all that. It was just taped on here. So all I did, still, still has that stickiness on there. And actually, it's easier if you flip it around. All I did was line this up, grab your pencil, make a mark. So now I have there. It's probably easier if you can see. So I just threw that on there, made a mark where it ends. Then I can take this piece of paper, grab my trusty ruler, lay it out. If I do it on the right side where my millimeters are, it helps. But, you know, plenty of ways to do this. And again, 308 millimeters when I lay this out. So various ways of doing that. So now I know that the circumference of my tumbler is 308 millimeters. So let's prep this tumbler. We want to make sure that we get everything uh, set. So if, you had our, if you're new to this trick, uh, you, again, if you've been on the channel before, you've watched my other videos, um, this is a pretty common way to test a tumbler. Uh, we're going to initially do a burn to make sure that we have our settings right so that we know that our, our wrap is going to line up. It's going to span the entire 308 millimeter uh, circumference of this tumbler. Um, you could do the whole can or the whole tumbler if you wanted to. Um, we don't need to do that in this particular example. I'm just not going to do it uh, for this one because this is just a tester. I'm not that worried barely paid anything for this tumbler, so if I screw it up, I'm not that worried about it. When I do the more expensive tumblers, I always do the full test, because um, it's the smart thing to do. Now, what am I doing with this aluminum foil? Well, you're going to find out. So, I am just going to take a little bit of aluminum foil, and I'll actually go a little, a little bit above, just because I don't want that plastic get burnt and I rip my, rip my aluminum foil. It's going to be a long project. All right, we're going to have to grab a little bit more anyway because it didn't, didn't quite reach all the way around. I don't want to go too far above because then it's going to hit the wheels and that would not be a good thing. So now the aluminum foil is here because the CO2 laser will bounce right off of it. It does not impact the aluminum foil. If the, we're going to be doing our test burn on this blue tape, but if you have your laser set too, too powerful, you'll burn right through the blue tape and you'll go into um, the paint or the powder coating, etc., which would not be a good thing. So if you coat your tumbler, your test, or you, you coat your tumbler in aluminum foil, 
and then you put the blue tape on top of that, you have something that you can do a test on and you don't have to worry about messing up a tumbler. Now, does this take time? Absolutely. But I'd rather spend, um, you know, if it takes an hour to do a full wrap, I'd ra rather spend an hour and make sure that I'm not going to uh, waste a tumbler because my steps per rotation were off or there was something that I didn't realize, you know, some setting was wrong. But if I get it all right on the front end, then I know that I'm not going to be uh, you know, wasting a $40, $80, $100 tumbler when I go to burn this. So, a couple more pieces of tape. We're just going to cover this little gap section here because the last thing I, again that I want is to go end up burning through my blue tape. So now I've got a layer of aluminum foil all the way around, so I am not going to end up impacting the color here. And now I can take my blue tape, and we're just going to run a layer all the way around our tumbler. And this is what we are actually going to do our first engrave on. So in a moment, we're going to go back into Lightburn and I'm going to show you how I set up uh, everything for the test. So again, we've got a layer of aluminum foil, we've got a layer of blue tape to do our test on, and that will keep us from messing up the finish on our tumbler until we're ready to engrave it. Okay, now that we have our tumbler all set up, we want to do a test pattern so that we know that it's going to fit the entire circumference when we put our pattern on it will fit the entire circumference from you know basically 0 to 308 uh, millimeters for this particular um, tumbler that I'm using today so I'm going to do a test pattern to do that now I've already created the pattern and this is here this arrow basically all this is is two triangles so if you don't know, you can come over here to the Create Regular Polygon tool. You can create your shape. Come over here to Shape Properties. You can change the number of sides. So if you make that three, like that. Now we have a triangle. We can select that triangle. We can, on a PC, Control C and then Control V will copy it. Now I've got two triangles. I can rotate this triangle. I'm holding down Shift so that it'll it'll stay in cardinal, uh, basically directions. Oops, actually, if I hold down Shift when I do that. So now we have two triangles, and then. I want this to basically uh, ex extend 308 millimeters and I want it to be a complete shape. So now I'm just going to draw like a little rectangle from one side to the other. I'm going to group them all. Oops. Let me get rid of that. Come back to my, to my selection arrow. Select them all come over here to align vertical center. Now they're all lined up. I should be able to hit this. That'll weld them all together. So now you can see it's just one shape. And then what is vitally important here is to set this at 308 millimeters. And then I'm going to go ahead and make it a little bit thinner. We're just going to make it 10. Uh, maybe we'll make it 15 make it 15. So now I have an arrow. Now the reason that I do an arrow, you could do this with just a regular rectangle, but the problem is it's sometimes it's hard to tell um, when these when it overlaps if you're actually overlapping in the right place or if you need to go further um, or less. The arrow, if the two points come together, so you can see on this one that I created over here, when we engrave this into the cup, this little point here should end up touching that little point there. If those two points come together, we know that we have got um, 
everything set up our rotary is completely set properly as far as steps per rotation our circumference all of that has been entered properly and when we actually go to burn our final image it's going to line up as it should so I'm gonna get rid of this because I don't need it and oh one more thing that I should tell you um, for this particular you can see this is just a tool it is these two uh, icons down here are tool paths that won't ever be cut. They're just there for you know placement or whatever. Um, if you look up here at my settings, you can see I made this box. It's 308, which is our diameter. And then the width, because we're dealing with things sideways, um, is the act actually is the height of this cup. So when I measured this tumbler, uh, minus the lip, it's 195 inches so I went ahead and made this I just made a rectangle 308 for height 195 for width and so now I know that's where I'm going to place my graphic um, to engrave and we'll do that here in another step but for now let's go back over to the laser we're going to send this job over and we are going to do a test burn now before I do that I'm always uh, thinking about other things how are we going to set this? So you can see here in red, this is going my test arrow, but right now it's set at 8 and 30, and that's because 8 and 30, I just know that's what I uh, cut acrylic um, at. So if you don't already have your library set up, this is a really useful feature in, li in Lightburn. You can see that as I do things, I have come to these, uh, you know, you just go here and you can either create it from layer or you can um, do a uh, completely new thing, but you can see here I've got blue tape as a selection. I hit test burn and then a light mark. And now if I hit assign, you'll see this changes. And now it is set 200 uh, speed at 10. And I'm going to change this. I don't need it to fill. Ugh. I just want it to do a line. So now it's set for my tape 200 millimeters a second the power is 10 which is basically the minimum that my tube is going to fire at so what I should see is a light burn um, on this blue tape when we take it over the laser so at this point I just want to make sure that um, I don't have anything else on and I can see right now I do have this little dot this I use as a center point and it is set at this origin at you can see 83 and 165.0 so I can send the laser head here and this is great again like you saw before we were if you're dealing with something where it's got a handle or you've marked you know the front or back of the the tumbler um, it's a great place you can you can send the laser head to that exact position and now you have a good reference point uh, for starting and if uh, one thing the X and Y, you know, the, the basically the motors and that whole steps for rotation, it's all different depending on whether or not you're using the rotary or you're using uh, the Y gantry. And so sometimes you'll see that you may think you have something in position, but then when you do it on the rotary, it'll be different. So we'll make sure that we send uh, the laser to that position before we start the burn. And then it's always good. You can see here I have this press origin, and this means press origin on the machine because that, that will bring the laser back to that um, position when the job is done. One of the things that you might not want to have happen um, is for it to go all the way back to the uh, or to try and go back uh, to an original position. Sometimes that can cause problems especially if you're dealing with something that doesn't have a removable handle. But enough of me rambling, let's get back to the laser. Okay so now we're back at the laser. We've got things positioned where they need to be. The rotary is connected. We've got all of our settings done in Lightburn. Um, so there's two things that I'm going to do. I'm going to send the laser to the center of that little blue dot that I showed you just a moment ago, and we'll see if the, uh, the tumbler turns. So no movement there. Everything's still in the uh, proper position. And then before we uh, send the job, we're going to frame it because I want to make sure that that uh, arrow that we created actually is going to land on the blue tape. And I apologize, I have to raise my voice, but uh, the chiller is kind of loud.
All right, so now we are framing the job. So it looks like when we uh, burn this, it's going to stay on our tape. So that's a good sign. So laser is on, laser power supply is on, chiller is on, got my air assist on low because we really don't need it. Um, I am going to turn my fan on as well. Um, gotta love, I don't know if I can get this in here, the AC Infinity fan with the remote control because my fan is actually now in another room. So this is super handy. And we'll go ahead and burn that. So this is why we do a test, um, because I can see that I'm going to need to do a little bit of tweaking because something is not quite right, uh, because my arrow points did not line up. So we're going to do a little bit of testing and we'll get that fixed. Okay, we've tweaked our settings. We've now got uh, our steps per rotation at 3065. Didn't change the diameter uh, of the cup at all. So 3065 is what it's set to. I'll cover how I uh, got to that number here in a bit, but we're gonna do another test burn and we're gonna see how that, uh, how that goes. see that my arrow points are touching so we have got a perfect uh, setting so now we are good to go on but uh, before I do that uh, we're going to jump back into light burn and I will show you how I uh, basically came up it was a took probably less than 10 minutes five to ten minutes of just going back and forth tweaking some settings and trying things out all right so back in light burn Really quick, I just want to talk about how I got my steps per rotation uh, set. So come back in here. Uh, first thing I did is I think I put in 3250. Um, that went way past the mark. Uh, I could see that it was going to be a whole lot. So I just dropped down. I think I did uh, 3050. You know, just kind of a, a guess. And then all that I did is I just kind of went back and forth. So I'd take my little blue dot here. And you can use this icon up here. And I said, move laser to selection center. So it moves the laser head there. And then rather than, con you could continually reburn this arrow, but that's just a lot of, a lot of unnecessary work and you're gonna run out of tape. and It's gonna be hard to tell what's going on, right? So I select my arrow. Again, coming up here, clicking on this and then if I just go move laser to the upper right selection of the arrow what it's going to do is it's going to put the laser head right here at the upper right position of the arrow then if you just hit the pulse button on your laser um, then you can put a little dot in that place then come back to light burn tell it to go to the lower right of the selection that will move the laser all the way down here hit pulse again and you'll have two dots. Now at 3050 my two dots were still about five millimeters apart so I increased it to 3060 and they got to where they were about one millimeter apart and then I just I went 3062 and they were like touching each other and then I went 3065 and now they're right on top of each other so just a little bit of tweaking but now I've got you can see here again if my computer will cooperate, now my steps per rotation is 3065. Um, I'm, yeah, sometimes it's just something that you got to tweak. You know, um, that's one of the things with the uh, the, the four wheel rotary uh, that doesn't happen on the chuck because the chuck is always always the same. 
Uh, you just have to change the cir circumference. But anyway, we've got that set up. So now we are going to get all this, get the uh, tumbler prepared, and then we will jump back into Lightburn, and we will um, get our pattern on here, and then we'll get things going. All right, back at the laser. So. As I just showed you in Lightburn, how we did the little uh, test here, um, you should by this point know your settings over here. And this button right here is the pulse button, at least on my controller. This is a pretty standard Ruida controller, but uh, that's... Um, how you can get your laser to pulse. Now, I've got my lid lock uh, bypass by use of a magnet, and that's why I can do this with the lid open. I don't run my laser like this unless I'm recording videos for safety's sake, but I've moved the laser head back to that little blue dot area. I can hit pulse. You can see the little puff of smoke that comes up. Then I go over to light burn. I'm gonna move to the top right of my arrow. So you can see it turns to the upper right there. I hit the pulse button, little puff of smoke. Now I'm gonna move it to the uh, bottom right. See the laser rotates again. I hit the pulse button again. Notice there was no smoke because it actually had already burned through the tape. So it's not impacting uh, the metal underneath. So. Those two points are exactly lined up. I know my steps per rotation are correct now. Um, just wanted to show you that, how easy it was. Um, so like I said, in less than five to 10 minutes, I had that all set up again. So now that we are done with our test, and we've already done that test on the bottom, so we know that my 200 speed and 20% will, go, will uh, work and this stuff is tougher than I thought. It's gonna work for uh, engraving this tumbler. So we're gonna get our tumbler prepared here. Get that clamp back into our, our rotary. We'll send it back to our starting position. Make sure our origin is set. So now, uh, once again, we're gonna go back to light burn. And just so you know, the laser den is not all that big of a place. When I say we're going back to light burn, uh, I'm literally right there. It's great to be in this uh, in the laser den now. Um, we even got the air conditioning going. It's nice and cool in here. Uh, yeah, I love I love life right now. So anyway, back to light burn. We're gonna get our pattern all set up. All right, back in light burn. Now, as you recall, we've already got our box set up here. It's just a tool path so that we have a reference it's set to show. You can't actually burn anything. But again, the height, because we're working on our side, the height is 308, which is the circumference of the tumbler, and the width uh, equates to the actual height of the tumbler, which is 195 millimeters. And again, that's, that's taking into account for that little plastic lip there. Now, we're gonna go ahead and um, we're going to import our graphic. So I'm gonna come up here to File and Import. Now again, if you've purchased my rotary clamp system, then I will send you the link and you'll be able to download these files for free. If not, you can go to Etsy to uh, Humble Beginning. I'll put a link in the description um, where you can purchase this uh, file set. He's got three different files in here. I'm just going to show one, uh, but you can take, take a look at what he's got here. I'm going to do this uh, We the People uh, Freedom graphic. Now, as you can see, he's got it set at uh, 317 by 233. So this was designed for that normal 40-ounce Stanley tumbler or the water bottle. Um, this is bigger than the shape that we need, so we're going to uh, shrink it. It'll squish it a little bit, but I'm not that worried again. This is just kind of a demo for you all. So I'm going to hold down the shift key, and then I'm going to do this rotation. And since I'm holding the shift, it, it only goes by 15 degrees. Er, 15 or 45 degrees, whatever it is. But so we've got it uh, straight up and down, um, which is good. And then what I'm going to do 
is I'm just going to change my height and width. So I'm going to make this 308 and then I'm going to make it 195. So you can see it squishes it a little bit. Um, and then I just need to place it in this box. Now, one thing that you can do to make sure that everything is perfect, what I'm going to do is I'm going to select my box, and then if I go to this upper right uh, coordinate or you know selection, I can see that it's at uh, 83 and 14.5. So now if I click on this, I can make sure it is also at 83 and 14.5. So it is now in the bounding box. So that's set up properly. Um, and I'm going to set this to 220. 20. And let's see, lines per inch. Ah, that should probably be, let's just do we'll go our standard 400 um, and then we do want to make sure that we turn off that arrow because we don't want that arrow to be to uh, to be in there so the only thing we want to have output at this time is our actual graphic um, again I have my upgraded air assist system so I'm not going to turn on the air because I'm not cutting I just need I will still have some low pressure air coming out of the nozzle that will keep the smoke away um, but uh, we're going to go ahead and let's see. I'm going to just save my project here real quick just to make sure. And I think we are just about ready to go. All right, we are back at the laser. Uh, just one last thing to do before we uh, start this file going. And that is to uh, frame uh, the job. So we're going to send it over. sent over and I'm going to hit the frame and we're going to let it do its magic. You can see the tumbler is rotating. And we just want to make sure that it does not go too far way off the back there. Everything looks good as far as uh, the clamp system. It's moving well. Not skipping, not binding anything like that and right down there to the edge now one thing I didn't mention um, I was able to resize this particular graphic because it's not a repeating pattern the uh, stars and the words you know they're gonna come together um, and they they'll hit each other but it they don't have to line up perfectly if it were a repeating pattern you wouldn't be able to um, uh, resize it because that would probably throw some things off but uh, it should be good for this so we're going to go ahead and uh, hit start and let this do its job and then I'll close this so that we get better fume extraction uh, once the job has started here and then we'll come back and we'll see what uh, what we got from our finished design so there it goes Alright, she is just about done and you can see the wrap coming together. So like I said, just because of the style of this wrap, you know, the stars and the letters, they don't line up. Um, they're not made to conjoin perfectly, but you can see that the wrap itself is coming uh, all the way around and our graphics, you know, should touch there at the end. So that is a perfect, uh, perfect alignment. Everything is looking really good. And uh, once it's done here, we're going to take it out, uh, spray it down with a little LA Awesome. Probably won't even need a magic eraser with this just because it's paint, so I don't want to take off the paint. Um, and then we'll just uh, show it and wrap things up. So, yeah, just about done. That's uh, pretty exciting. Go. 
close. That is it. And it is uh, returning to the starting position. Back to the origin. All right, so we got the lid open and uh, we'll spin her around here and you can see what we've got. Now I will say that this is this first time I've ever done a cheap uh, a cheap tumbler like this. And you'll see there's some spots here. I'll have to see when I'm all done. I don't know if oh, it's actually just a residue. So it's probably the paint um, not coming all the way off or or that is the eh, slightly defocused area. So that's just a, a matter of dealing with the paint. But we're gonna go get this thing cleaned up and then we'll uh, come back and show you the final product. All right, so we have completed this. Uh, take a look at that. It cleaned up really nicely. I did. I just used a little bit of LA Awesome, and I did actually use the uh, Magic Eraser. Just made getting those little uh, puddles of paint off even easier. So I'd say that's a pretty successful uh, run. So again, I just want to thank you for being on this journey with me and learning together. Um, again, if you purchase that uh, rotary clamp from me, you'll get these files uh, for free. Um, and if you like this design, you can go support my buddy uh, Joseph over at Humble Beginning, and uh, I'll link that down in the description. So, hopefully, that helped you um, on your journey uh, for making these custom tumblers. And you know, like always, if you like what I'm doing here on the channel, please hit that like and subscribe button. Um, I enjoy getting new followers and hearing your comments. If you have questions, if there's anything that you'd like me to cover in the future, you know, please just uh, make a comment below and uh, we'll just uh, keep on learning and burning together. Just take care.